Mike from uh, Evasion Motorsports. Today we're gonna kind of show you what we are working on for our new Pikes Peak race car. Rundown of what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish, just go over our plans for the car. So I want to take you guys behind the scenes in the next few episodes, kind of give you an insight on how it's done. So yeah. Cool, so what do we have over here, Mike? So this is a 2025 Ionic 5N. The car has, I think, 600, a little bit over 600 horsepower and over 500 foot-pounds of torque. So it is a quick car. <laughs> it's fully electric. It has a lot of cool features. It has actually a paddle shift and it actually mimics a gasoline engine car sound. It's not the fastest way to drive this so there's a lot of cool features to make the car more fun to drive and just give you uh, a better experience behind you know driving an EV. Pikes Peak Hill Climb is a famous motorsport race that takes place in Colorado Springs every year where you start at 9,000 feet elevation and you end up at 14,000 feet and it has over 150 turns you know you're climbing up 12 miles of mountain road. We've done Pikes Peak about eight times in the past. So this will be our ninth attempt at this. Driver this year will be Rob Walker. Some of you might remember, Rob has driven for us many, many times in the past. I think four Pikes Peak hill climbs and a lot of time attack events. So we're excited to have him back this year. Our goal this year for Pikes Peak is to break the 10 minute barrier. We've came really close many times in the past, but never done it. So if we do accomplish that, it will be a, you know, a great achievement. We're gonna go through some of the mods we're doing to the car. For suspension, we're working with Molton. For those of you that don't know, Molton has been in the motorsport suspension game for quite some time, and they are gonna custom build us a set of motorsport dampers. Working with Mike Kojima from Moto IQ, we are trying to set the optimal spring rate and valving to work with the car and Pikes Peak. For the aero, we are actually super excited to be working with a legendary aero company from Japan. Uh, it's a company that we've had a long relationship with. We'll show you later on uh, who that is. And in order for the kit to get done in a short period of time, we actually have to uh, resort to using technology. So we had the whole car 3D scanned. That data was sent over to Japan where rendering and mock-up was done. Wheels are provided by our friends at Titan 7. They are custom building us a set of 19 by 11 forged wheels for the race. They're made to be able to adapt to our prototype EVS tuning aero disc. So it should look really cool. We'll be using Yokohama A005 racing slicks. We've used these slicks for many events in the past, Pikes Peak, Time Attack, and they're just probably the most proven fastest tire that we've, we've used. So as it stands right now, we have a very tight schedule. We have less than three months until race day. So to build a car from the ground up and get it ready, test it and transport it out to Pikes Peak, it's crunch time. So everyone is on it right now and we're hoping to test the car fairly soon. You just saw this thing get taken apart by this man over here, JJ. He did it fairly quickly, I'd say in about two or so days. Yeah. We got everything taken out of this interior. The carpet is still going to come out. Um, that's just some other the interior bits that are still sitting there. All of it's going to get removed before it goes off to Imer Engineering. Um, but with everything out, how much weight do you think about that we saved? Interior pieces, they all add up eventually, but uh, I, would, I would say we easily over 200 pounds so far just in that but we're gonna add it back in and roll cage but I guess the main thing is you don't try not to add any more weight than what the car started with too. yeah 
most definitely and then you know like you said i imagine the the carbon doors the carbon hatch and everything that's going to shave as much weight out as possible too and you know keep center of gravity as low as we can get it well after this thing gets back from imer we're going to try and get it back together and built as quickly as we can so we can uh, maybe get some testing in before pikes because june is coming quick and th that deadline's going to come faster than we know it guys so uh car's back from the fabricator and today we have rob walker you don't know uh, he was a driver for us many many years ago we've done pike peak four times and countless time attack events so <laughs> <laughs> thanks mike yeah it's really good to be here and super excited to drive for evasive this year for pike peak as you can see we have the hyundai ionic 5n uh, that we've been testing it. and yeah happy to talk about it yeah so uh how's testing been with this thing yeah so as you know evasive is not new to the ev uh track racing world at all they had the tesla model 3 that they campaigned for a couple years and we're just continuing off this with this uh, ionic 5n uh we had a couple track days with it uh honestly it's been really fun i, I think it's a really good driver's car uh, you do carry the weight around so it's pretty hard on the tires but uh, with proper alignment, uh, proper knowledge, we're able to kind of dial in the, the stock suspension. And to be honest, you'll surprise a lot of fast cars on the track. Um, I had a couple people come up to me saying, this thing's a rocket out of the corners. Um, but yeah, and so far it's a really good driver's car and you can tell Hyundai spent a lot of time uh, building this car to be track and driver ready. So that's something I think that's really unique about this car. It's, it's really actually ready to be on the track. Like the cooling package is really good, right? Like it, 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 it allows you to run a full session without really needing to stop and let it cool down compared to like some of the other EVs out there. Yeah, I think I read somewhere that um, they were able to do two laps of full movement ring, um, which is pretty amazing if you think about it from a thermal perspective. So yeah. there is an upper limit of thermal limit that the battery will reach where it starts to power down. But I typically get about five to six laps before I hit that stage. Um, but as long as you keep an eye on it, uh, the car actually performs really consistent from lap to lap. Yeah. We're looking for 10 minutes. We're under. <laughs> so, Rob, how does the Ionic kind of compare to other gas-powered cars or, you know, other things that you have driven? Yeah, so I started my track journey with an S2000, and I think that's when I met Mike and Invasive. Uh, I started to drive their S2000. As you can tell, S2000 is significantly lighter. But it also has less power, so it's more of a, a cornering machine. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the Ionic is a little bit the opposite. I drove the Evasive Evo for a couple years for them as well. It has similar characteristics, but I think the weight distribution is much more different, right? So in the Evo, you have a pretty heavy iron, cast iron engine in the front, and it's all-wheel drive, um, but you're always kind of fighting or managing the front uh, traction limit, right? But Ionic is actually a 50-50 distribution car. So actually in mid corner with proper throttle, the car will step the, the tail out really well balanced, right? And then it's, it's basically really balanced throughout all the corners, uh, except for entry. I think the entry is the only location, like corner entry is the only point where you're really having to slow down the car due to its weight and then get the car rotated at the same time because all the uh, weight and traction limited is gonna be up front, right? So 
my strategy for driving this is just make sure the car slowed down early enough, right? And get the car rotated and really just use the torque to come out of the corners uh, to produce a good lap time. So we've been using this Ionic 5 to test with. Pretty much stock. The, this yeah. one is bone stock just to, you know, kind of as a baseline. But so while that one has been getting tested, this is what just came back from Imer Engineering. So the full cage has been done. We have started painting it. JJ and Kel have been prepping and painting the cage. It's about half finished right now. What else did uh, Imer take uh, care of, Mike? Also, air jack right here. So JJ is working on getting the hardware, I mean the uh, fittings and lines to get it plumbed. Um, it's key having air jacks just because uh, we're doing a lot of wheel and tire changes and with the aggressive aero, it's just too time consuming to have to jack it up each time. Air jack will save us a lot of time. It also lets us keep the tire warmers on while we're jacked up and ready to go. So yeah. crucial for Pike's Peak. And then you can see the, the skins, all the doors are off. I think we talked about last mm -hmm. time. Take a look at this. Oh, so there we go. We've got the rear doors back. <laughs> Wow. This would have been probably like 60, 70 pounds each. Now it's like five, six pounds. So that's Major like, weight that savings right there. Four, you can do the math. It's, yeah, it's a couple hundred pounds yeah, gone so right I there. I think it's crucial that we reduce the weight of the car because you can't really tune the motor per se. So uh, lighter, for a race car, lighter is always better. So Definitely. Yeah. All right, so the Ionic 5 is back from fabrication over at Imer Engineering. The cage is done. We have uh, the air jack system getting completed right now. But uh, we do have some other updates on the other aspects of the car. You guys just saw the, uh, the carbon rear doors. But we do have a little bit of a sneak peek of the render of the aero that we're going to be getting. Give you a little glimpse. This thing is... So we are working with our longtime partner, um, one of the top Japanese aero tuning companies. Um, I won't say the name, you might, maybe you could guess it already, but we're really stoked to be working with them. And so far it's looking like it's gonna be really good. It's gonna look good and function well, so. Yeah, just off of the, uh, the render alone, it looks like the car is gonna have a completely different uh, presence. It's gonna look a lot more like a race car after uh, we get everything on. And also, it's, it's the way Pikes Peak is, it's, it's not really a high speed uh, run up the hill. So you want to make sure the downforce is, is set to max setting for a low speed corner and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to make sure that this stuff actually sticks to the ground going up. So that's kind of the idea with this arrow tube. Yeah. That's why everything's so exaggerated. Yeah. So along with the, the arrow updates and everything, we do have some updates I heard on uh, the suspension as well. Yeah. So suspension, we're actually going to be working with Mopon suspension. For those of you who know, they've been in the game for as long as I can remember. And they make a lot of motorsport specific campers. So um, they're going to be here next week. We'll probably show you, uh, you know, footage of that when they come. They're going to do some measurements and we're going to build a custom set of dampers for this car to be able to handle the weight and whatever it needs for going up Pikes Peak. Sick, yeah. Yeah, well, uh... That's about it for this episode, guys. We, uh, we made a bunch of progress on the car. It's moving along very quickly, and from this point on, it's really only going to start moving quicker. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you guys next episode.